re resigned her position and it's over with. So uh, she's entering a new phase of her life of being a full-time chaplain. Wait, 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 Lance, what do you mean resigned her position? Not here. Oh. She's retired. Okay. Yeah, so she, so Karen, uh, and you'll hear more about it because it's it, it's going to be included in our sermon today. But uh, yeah, Karen, uh, who won't be here with us today, sends her love. She's, it's possible that she's coming down to visit mom <laughs> in Little Compton. But um, oh. she uh, is in Boston today. And she's doing a service for uh, the church that she belongs to in Boston. But she's left her role as a nurse practitioner and has taken on a full-time position as a chaplain, at, which you can imagine is a very different position uh, in um, upstate New York somewhere near Lake George. I'm, actually, it might even be on Lake George. Uh, so... And uh, before we get started, uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, let's big prayers for our brother, Phil, who we don't see on the camera a lot, but uh, he's part of our Faithways family in, a, in, a, in our own way. And he, uh, he had gallbladder surgery yesterday and um, maybe the day before, but he's, he's home now in Jan's care. And uh, we, uh, we, just, we just love Phil and we want to want yeah. him to go quickly so well good morning everyone again and yeah joseph can you fire us up i'm gonna mute all actually joseph go ahead i'll mute while you play and uh just so, uh, one one reminder is yeah go ahead started joseph thank you so much Woo! holy spirit <laughs> uh, i wanted to do shout out for uh, rob uh rob uh wrote this week's devotional if you haven't read it please do um it's really nice and uh hopefully it inspires any one of you to uh want to share a devotional or something uh we'd love to have that and um rob thanks for doing that i did get some nice comments about that a um, couple other announcements before we get started. Uh, one is that uh, several people asked for uh, Dear Hatred, which, which Lori uh, shared and, and, and read for us last week. And if that's something you're interested in, um, let me know. I've got a copy of it and I can, I can send it on to you. Somebody asked for it that I didn't send it to last week and I can't remember who it was. And then the third thing is, is that next Saturday, July 15th at 4 p.m. ish, uh, the Faithways group, we're going to have a gathering and we want bodies. We want people there. It's an open house. Uh, there will be food. There will be prayer. There will be a lot of fellowship and there will be music. And so we want to uh, invite all who can. We're going to try to do it outdoors. Um, that and we're planning to do it outdoors in our courtyard outside and that's at the U united congregational church of holyoke which is 300 appleton street you may you'll probably see an email i have i have an email group that's called the faithways few 
and it's more of this group and so i'll send one out but definitely it's open house so feel free to invite others and i did mention that karen's not going to be here today but we send blessings to her and we are grateful for our faith uh, facebook friends as well so thank you for joining us there and rob i turn it over to you thank you lance okay would you please join me in prayer lord some of us come here to worship you some of us are not in a place of worship but that's okay we're still here some of us have no idea why we're here and that's okay too we're here so lord we are bold enough to ask your blessing on our time and our fellowship and may your spirit rise up in us in the name of jesus christ our lord amen amen <laughs> Uh, and then I think you have our affirmation, Rob. Good morning, Matt. I gotta Hi. unmute. <laughs> <laughs> One of the wonderful things about Jesus is he went to the people. He met them where they were, but people also went to him. And so we try to practice that here at Faith Ways in that we go and try to meet you. So whether you are church or unchurch, a seeker or cynic, a sinner or a saint, gay, straight or otherwise, rich, poor, healthy or sick, lost or found, we welcome you here. May we practice together and be blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rob. Uh, so important to remember. And thanks for that intro there. And I am going to, as you can see, we have some beautiful flowers um that's one of the special things about this time of year and uh i'm gonna light the candle and as you can also see i you know there's it, it's really a, a pretty simple <laughs> so maybe uh maybe for simplicity and quiet so take a deep breath and i will light the candle and we'll just meditate for a moment Amen. Peace to all. And Adil, would you lead us in uh, the, our doxology? Yeah, awesome. Let's do it. We, I won't share the screen today, uh, if that's okay. And we, if you know it, sing along, but stay muted. And Dio, if you could just lead us on. Thank you. Blessings to everyone. It's so happy to see everybody every morning if we can all just bring our wandering minds together and sing the doxology from our hearts from our souls so our higher power can hear us <sighs> praise god from whom all blessings flow praise him all creatures here below Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessings to everyone. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Dio, so much. And um, so... Well, welcome everybody, and it is our time for check-in, and I, Randy already checked in with me, but I think Randy needs to check in with everybody else, so you want to get us le let off there, Randy? <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. Um, well, the, the end of the week was a little rough on me and stuff. I slipped off the toilet and hit my tailbone on the 
porcelain and ended up on the floor and now my tailbone hurts so I've got to get that checked out probably tomorrow uh, and um, I need prayers for the residents here and the employees. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. And uh, Christina, yes. Hi, everybody. Hi, there was only two of us on when I first came on, so I'm healing well. My, my stitches started falling out yesterday. Um, it's taken a little longer with the bottom than it did with the top. It was like quick with the top, but not so quick this time. But I would like special prayers for me and my dad, my dad's dealing with a little, a little health issue, but I'm trying to coax him into calling the doctor, okay, because it's every day. So, um, also, I'd like to say a, a special prayer for Cathedral in the Night, <laughs> which Stephanie still runs. I get notifications every Sunday afternoon and I watch them on um, Facebook. And she does, you know, she just preaches a little word and then they, they cut off and go to the, you know, the whatever after that. But she's still going with it. That's where Lance started. And I remember that because it was over eight years ago. <laughs> so I just, um, Keep everybody in prayer for, for Cathedral in the Night, because that's what it's called still. And they still do the meal, and they still do all of that, Lance. So you you started a good precedent there. Thank God you, God bless everybody. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, and God bless you. I'm going to share a little picture uh, with everyone right now. Um, because I, what I do remember is that Christina would never come over and listen to my sermons. And she was across the street, which is four lanes of, of road. And so I'd have to speak up really loudly for her to hear the sermons. She's like, I don't need that, you know. But uh, we became really good friends anyway. And uh, I just want to show you, this is, uh, if you can see this picture. Um, this is Christina and her wares. She's a crocheter. And this is uh, her um, selling her wares in Northampton. You can see it's four lanes across plus parking. And right here uh, in the background is the is a brownstone building. And that's where Cathedral in the Night was. And uh, that uh, started in 2011. So it was actually it would be uh, 11 years ago. So uh, there you go. Time flies. I think I had some brown hair left back in those days. That picture was 2015. Yeah. So anybody else uh, for a check-in? Let's see. Anybody? Okay. John, did you, John, did you raise your hand or? No? Okay. Um, all right. Well, I think we're good. Andrew, do you have a song for us? Sure thing. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Great to see you all. Very excited to uh, get together next weekend. Uh, share some music, record some music, do all that fun stuff, eat some great food. So that will be great. All right, I'll share my screen here. You have our words of assurance, and then John I do. Sure. 
They may not immediately sound like words of assurance, but I pray that they will bless you in some way. This comes from John 21, and Jesus has appeared um, on the shore after he's been resurrected. He's appearing to the disciples who are fishing. John 21. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I forgot to mention this is considered Peter's redemption after he had denied Jesus three times. Um, may these words bless you. Amen. Thank you, Rob. Oh, man. Um, yeah, so, uh, Brother John, do you have our scripture? You're muted. Good hey everybody. Good to see you. Gosh darn it. Always great to see you. Such a highlight. Um, let's see here. These are, uh, this is a message from Matthew. Uh, and there's something in the way. And so I'm just, oh, there we go. Chapter 11, um, 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by their deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven. Uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Father, Lord of heaven. Um, and earth because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants yes father for such was your gracious will all things have been handed over to me by my father and no one knows the son except the father and no one knows the father except the son and anyone to whom the son chooses to reveal him Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in, sorry, you gotta find the, there you go. Gentle and humble in, tension builds, apologies. Heart, uh, take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of God. Amen. Right on, John. Thank you for that great reading. And we get bonus today because Dio is going to play a song for us, or do a song for us. So Dio, jump on in. But don't forget the scripture, because we're coming back to that. <laughs> Blessings again. It's always great to be able to share. I just wanted to share this song with you to kind of get us in that mood so we can bring ourselves to God and be able to pull in the things we need to pull in for ourselves for our sermons. The song is Break Every Chain. Power in the name of Jesus. 
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Bring the spirit into your life, into your heart. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. All sufficient sacrifice, so freely given, such a prize. But our redemption's heaven's gates swing open wide. We believe. All sufficient sacrifice, so freely given, such a prize. What our redemption's heaven's gates swing open wide. We believe. Power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Amen. Uh, that was beautiful, Dio. Uh, just what a great song. It's almost like a, it's almost like a chant. It's lovely. And Linda, good morning. Thank you for joining us. And Dio, it's good to see you as well. So welcome everybody. And Matt, Matt Reyes is on. So it's great to have the family here. Um, so you heard our scripture today and, uh, what it brought me to thinking and to how it kind of connected through prayer and discernment was this idea of identity, sort of an identity thing going on. And I believe that we struggle sometimes uh, in our lives to know who we are as individuals. And nowhere I think is this more evident than um, high school and college graduates and those who have sort of been done with college or done with high school for a while. This whole idea of the minute you graduate, um, people start asking you, well, what are you going to do? Or if you're going to go to college, they're like, well, you know, what are you going to major in? And, and of course, uh, you, you know, you may be one of those special people that actually knew it and just followed that. But most people are, are, uh, don't really know. And you might actually say you're going to do something or you might think you are. Um, but a lot of times, let's just face it, it's, it's not easy to know what your identity is and what you should be doing and how you should see yourself and how you should be preparing yourself. Most of us really have no idea. Um, I've in talking to my own children, um, they're in that mode of, you know, post college and what am I doing and where do I belong? Um, and, and that's a, that's a really hard thing. Um, but it, and I realized for me, it, it took me many, many years. I mean, I'm 60, I was probably in my mid fifties before I figured it out. Actually, it was probably cathedral in the night that actually started me thinking about what I really, where I really fit and really belonged. So this idea that we don't know is okay, this idea, but it is important to understand having a specific identity in a lot of ways helps us to feel grounded 
and it helps us to feel purposeful and sometimes lacking that really concrete sense of identity makes us feel a little bit unhinged. It might even make us feel a little unworthy or a little unneeded. So for today, for this scripture, I have three kind of takeaways. I like to do this because I like to tell you the end. I like to tell you the answers to the sermon that I'm going to give so that in case there's a quiz at the end. But it goes something like this. Identity supports us. Our identity does support us. It helps us to feel grounded. It can give us purpose, but it can also fool us. And it also can send us in the wrong direction. Oftentimes, our identity is ego-led. And an ego-led uh, identity is often taking us down a, a road that's not the right road. Following our hearts. Today, we read in this scripture that uh, was so eloquently read, we hear about following their hearts. They called it, and Jesus was calling it like childlike instincts, going to that childlike place. And that may help. And the second part of that is so so by, by becoming childlike, what you're doing is you're letting go of all the adult or learned expectations, all the preconceived expectations. The second part of that is, so that's being childlike with your instincts, but the second part is understanding your call. Where are you being called? In coming, and the third part of this is in coming to Jesus, we find our true identity. And thus, as it says in the scripture, we will find peace and acceptance in, in hearing and accepting the call to Jesus. If you in, in this uh, in our parable, the, there's two parts to the scripture today, and the first part is a parable, and it has uh, it, it, many times it says you know that it's really about Jesus and John the Baptist, and um, for John the Baptist, uh, he came uh, through his baptism, which was about admitting, um, kind of uh, admitting who you were, really understanding who you were. And, and repenting or giving up to, to God, turning back to, to God in that way. And that was John's thing. And they said when he did that, uh, he was like a demon. Even though he didn't drink, even though he didn't, he didn't do any crazy stuff, they, people considered him a demon. They, that was the identity that they put on him. And with Jesus who came to love people, to be compassionate, to heal, to teach, uh, you know, he oftentimes used the banquet. He used the drinking of wine and the breaking of bread as his symbol. And, and for that, they, they labeled him a glutton and a drunkard. And so, again, that identity became coming from the outside to him. And so uh, the parable, it begins with these children sitting in the marketplace and they're calling out to one another. And... Uh, they said, we sought to bring you in, but you denied. We sought to bring you music and have you sing along and have you dance, but you refused. We sought to teach you to become closer to God, and yet all you did was refuse it. And so that's where Jesus and John are, are coming into this. Both came, notice, as infants, as children. That's the symbol of what they're calling us to do. John with his deep sensitivity uh, and Jesus with his drinking and his eating. He always put fellowship first. He always put compassion for others first. The theme that they are kind of refuting is this, that we, is this tendency to strive for an adult-like identity, right? We have this tendency to strive for an adult-like identity. And how do we do it? Well, in this, it says we do it through the law. We do it through our intellect. We do it by making ourselves seem smarter. We do it by making ourselves seem richer. We do it by set making ourselves seem more powerful. And that's how we create this sort of ego-driven identity of ourselves. And, and Jesus in this kind of points oftentimes to church leadership because he was very he was very much in the mix of church leadership and and he was kind of an well he was no doubt an outsider to church leadership so he says yeah you know they have a way of doing this and that's the law for in the hebrew world they called it the torah and those were the laws that had to be followed and jesus often broke those laws he ate with sinners 
he uh, he he worked with tax collectors. I mean, he did a lot of things. He healed on on the Sabbath, many things that would be considered breaking the law. But Jesus knew something more important. And intellects often have that same thing. There's nothing wrong with being intellectual. But what, what Jesus is saying, to get to this level is going to require childlike attitude, a childlike sense, a childlike presence. He gives thanks in a prayer. And, and in the prayer, he, he reveals this whole idea of the infants. He gives thanks to God for making him like an infant. We mentioned earlier Karen, uh, who is our uh, one of our other ministers, and Karen's not here today because Karen just went through, has just finished her last day as a um, nurse practitioner. And a nurse practitioner is a major career to begin with. And what Karen has done is she's quit that profession. And that is not an easy thing. And in a lot of ways, it's a huge loss of identity for Karen, um, you know. But what's happened is Karen got the call. She got the call and the call was towards the chaplaincy, towards the ministry. And so she, you know, and it took several years, but she followed that call. And I think that's what's bringing her to the Silver Bay uh, Resort Center that she's going to be the chaplaincy in. Um, and the thing about in talking to Karen, there's some things that became very real for her at the end of last week when she quit. And one is that it was a big letting go. It's like this was her identity for I don't know how many years, 25 years, say. And along with that identity came a certain amount of power believe it or not, because she wasn't just a nurse. She was a nurse. She was at the top of the nurse food chain, basically. So there's a lot of power involved, but it also came with a lot of authority. And in some ways, it came with some ego boosting. You feel good about yourself because you're right, you know, you've, you've accomplished this. And so that's some of the things that had to be let go in order to move on. My own story uh, is that when I was in high school, I wanted to be a teacher. And I, I did everything I could to be a teacher. I, all through high school, I went to different little elementary schools and I did student teaching. And you know, it was mostly things like PE and, and that kind of thing. But I really wanted to be a teacher. But I didn't follow that path. I went kind of the more common, the more adult-like path. Because I, was, I didn't feel like I could make a living you know, that the, the way I thought a living should be done, being a teacher. And I just didn't think I was going to be able to have all the things that I wanted. I just wasn't going to go down the adult path by, uh, by being a teacher. So I kind of became something different. I went a different way. Then I became a business person. That is until I was about 48 years old. <laughs> and that's when I really feel like I kind of got the call. And... Um, and, uh, you know, it didn't make sense. It really didn't. But I kind of went to my family and said, hey, I think I'm gonna, gonna go to seminary. And I, I took it the different path. I've stayed in the business world and I've tried to bridge the gap between the two. But um, it, it just is this other, this other way. Um, there's a, a different kind of identity for me as a businessman than there would have been as a teacher. And of course, there's a different identity for me as a pastor than there is as a business person. And um, so there, there are these different things. And sometimes it can get a little schizophrenic when you're working between all, <laughs> I don't know, I don't really know that much about schizophrenia, but sometimes I feel like, you know, I'm part businessman, I'm part minister, all these different things, but never really fully into any of them. So it's this kind of identity crisis, right? And, and that's kind of what we call it. We call it an identity. We don't know who we are. It doesn't matter how old you are. It can be, you know, eight or 10, or you can be my age. Um, it, it can be very difficult. This identity crisis is not limited to us, to people. Churches are going through identity crisis in a very big way right now. Who are we? What is our purpose as a church? Why does it even matter? 
Why should anyone spend time in this institution that we are? There's so much work that goes into a church. Why should I even bother? Who are we? That's resounding through many, many churches in our country. And it's a very good question. I think there's a great answer to it. But again, it's an identity crisis that the churches are going through. I believe our country also uh, is going through an identity crisis. Um, what is a patriot? Who are we as a nation, right? And uh, it came up the other day, and I, I won't mention any names, but somebody that I actually know posted uh, something on Facebook. I don't really go to Facebook very often, but I do use it for the ministry. And um, I happened to notice that it was, it was about, it was very white supremacist, which I had never, ever experienced. I didn't think I would ever see something by somebody I knew. And it was basically saying uh, something like, when is white, white supremacy month or something like that. And I, you know, that's something that sadly, and, and, and it's, it's frightening and kind of horrific, but there's some normalization to that. People didn't just shut this person down. People were like, yeah, you know, agreeing. And, and um, that's, a, that's scary. That's a real problem. And it's a real identity crisis. It's, it's a very real thing. And it goes so against the image or the identity of this country that I, my understanding anyway, personally. So it's very frightening. And it's something that comes because of an identity crisis. The identity crisis, remember, makes us unsettled. It makes us aimless. And it also makes, it, it makes us unhealthy. And it can make us individually unhealthy. It can make our churches unhealthy. And it can make our country unhealthy. Jesus criticizes the mainstream, especially the elites. He says they do not hear. They don't hear like a child. They don't hear the truth. They don't hear and understand the depths of what's going on. They operate very much on ego and self-serving. I'm guessing that these comments that are coming up on Facebook, and there's not a lot of them. I only saw one of them, but this one comment, I'm guessing it comes from a place of fear. I'm guessing it comes from a place where somebody feels like they, do, they no longer feel like they belong. They no longer feel like they're part of something. And so I have empathy for that because I feel like this person has an identity crisis and this person is very sick. Friends, you don't have to be going down the road to becoming a minister to be called. The fact that you're on Faithways this morning with us means that you are being called. This parable that we read, that John read this morning, this parable calls us to let go of our burdens, to be released from the chains, to end the identity search, to quit looking for something else of who we are. And it says this, and it's very important, take up the yoke of Jesus. Does anybody know what a yoke is? Raise your hand if you know what a yoke is. All right, uh, mom, what's a yoke? A yoke, I would say, is something hanging around your neck. And people wear, have yokes and animals have yokes. Businesses have yokes. Yes. It's a containment. Yeah. So, it, and that's, yes. Yes, but so when they, in the, in the scripture, when they talk about a yoke, a yoke was something that usually they would hook a couple of oxen to and they'd be, it'd be, it'd hold them together and keep them working together. And in this case, a yoke is a, is a term that talks about following the Jesus, the, you know, taking on Jesus yoke is to go Jesus way, is to follow Jesus way. But at the same time, you're not just doing it by yourself, you're doing it with Jesus. You're taking up the yoke with your teacher. And in, and in this case, the yoke is to be following your teacher, basically. And Jesus is saying, follow me, learn from me, even imitate me. And what he says to that is, I will be with you. Take up my yoke. 
in doing this, and this goes back to Dio's song, in doing this, in taking up the yoke of Jesus, in becoming that as your identity, we will know a new freedom, a new sense of freedom, a new, our, our identity crisis, whatever it is, will be solved. It will no longer be an issue. We won't have to call ourselves lumber salesmen or doctors or gardeners or whatever we are, whatever we call ourselves. We will be people of Jesus, following Jesus' teachings, and that is super special. It calls us as individuals. This call is for us as churches, and the call is for us as nations of creation to take up the yoke. And it's not an intellectual pursuit, and it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make more money. It doesn't have to make you more popular or more. It's just the right call. Like an infant, this is calling us to lay aside all that we have learned from outside of Jesus and to follow Jesus and to take his lead and thus become one in a completely new spirit. Amen. Friends, let us pray. We thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for the teachings of your Son, Jesus. Reveal to us as infants our call, our purpose, our divine identity, and let us take up the yoke you have presented to us. In Jesus' name, amen, and God bless you, friends. So, uh, yeah, how about a song? <laughs> Joseph, you got us? Wonderfully said, Lance. I love your story. I too am disheartened by white Christian ethno nationalism. And I don't understand conservative Jesus. Because Jesus broke bread with everybody. by the band it's written by Bob Dylan and I think I'll work that one up for next time but uh, Lance had said something about waiting to be released and it just started to play in my head so it just came out that is a beautiful awesome song thank you Joseph really awesome great and uh, everybody like that um, 
Yeah, so that brings us to a time of sharing. Um, we'll continue to uh, take prayer requests. I've got a, a list. Phil, Phil's on the list. Um, and uh, also anything that the, resonated from the scripture or anything where you saw God this week, raise your hand and let us know. Yep, brother. We'll go John, Dio, then Mom. Uh, Lance, thanks very much for that uh, really impactful sermon. That was pretty powerful. <laughs> and the whole time I was thinking about it, I was thinking about identity and um, and what it what hit me was is exactly that 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 if you know for struggling to find identity, uh, it's it's so easy because uh, my identity is is when I'm lost and when I can't find myself. I know I am a child of God, and uh, boy, what a what a foundation of identity that can be, and everything goes from there. Um, so my prayer today is 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 certainly for for anybody who's lost and struggling with who they are, because um, uh, there's a solution right in front of them, and and just go to go to Jesus, and and um, everything follows from there. Thank you. Thank you, John. Well said. Beautiful. Um, Dio, Mom, and then Rob. Hello, everyone. Um, that was a very powerful sermon. Um, kind of hit right on the nose because I'm in that identity piece as well, you know, with struggling and trying to make that move as far as God calling me as well, but also being a teacher and being so many things, a musician, you get pulled in so many different places, you, you start to forget where your home base is. And the one thing I do know is that being a child of God really grounds me where I need to be. Um, I really resonated when you said that, you know, we are um, like infants. And in that beginning stage as an infant, we, we kind of just love anybody and everybody. It's when we start learning from the people around us, we start to bring in all those negative pieces that really change who we are. Um, and for me, it's like, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of all the stuff that's really coming up right now. Makes me not wanna travel. Um, it makes me fearful of my grandson of the world that he's growing up in because, you know, we preach love here. You know, we preach helping people here and we, we manifest this within our homes so we can build a more stronger foundation of, of good things and positive things in our lives. And when we hear these little things like that, it kind of dismantles you in some way. And the only thing that I could think of when Lance said that is, I'm not gonna put, give them that energy. I'm not gonna give that stock in that because the more that I paid mine to that, it makes me so fearful that we stop serving God and stop doing God's work. That means we stop helping those who are in need. We stop getting out and, and being that, that um, person that when people look at us, they know that we are a child of God. And we just can't let that level of negativity get in our souls. Um, I was watching TV one day and a little quote came up and it really caught me. And it says, God created all things. It it's only man that decides which ones are mistakes. So if God created us all, we're the ones, the, those few that are deciding that things are mistakes, not God. Because God already told us what what he wanted and what we need to do. So don't listen to all the stuff or be, be mindful of knowing what's in front of you, but don't let it in your heart. Continue to give God's love and help those who are needed. Amen, Dio. Amen. Uh, Mom, you're muted. And then Rob. Oh, Lance, I'll make this brief about identity, but, um, I feel that it's important to face it directly at no matter what age you are. And I um, 
think once you figure it out, then you go into a new chapter. But um, I'm in a chapter that is interesting at 86 and a widow. Um, and you just jolly well figure out how you can do your best and what you can do for other people and to love God. Thank you. Amen, Mom. We're with you. Uh, Rob? So I was actually, that was a one-handed acknowledgement of John, but um, I believe Shana is actually, was, is that true, Shana? I thought you would raise your hand. Okay, so Shana, you're up. Thanks, Rob. Um, I'm not sure bad things happen in threes. I'm not sure if these were bad things, but this happened to me in a single day. Um, I haven't fallen off a horse in 20 years. And as I was riding down to the riding arena, I said, gee, my shaps feel very slippery today. I should put on some what's what surfers would call sex wax, where you wax the insides of your shaps or your boots and it makes you stick to the saddle. Well, I had a horse that was very unpredictable and I did not see it coming and I wound up in the dirt. And um, I was sitting, sitting in the dirt, I landed on my butt and I said, what just happened? <laughs> that was what I said. And that was a very traumatic thing, but the day went on from there. Um, I walked out into my barn, this is later in the afternoon, walked out into my barn and the entire front stall door of my horse was laying on the ground in front of her stall. And I looked at that situation, the horse was standing in its side its stall as if there was still a door there. And I said to myself, what just happened? <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. And then, um, I, and and I think that God was looking out for me in those instances, and they were remarkable things. And to have three of those happen in one day was like, wow. <laughs> but um, I'm grateful to be here, and um, I'm grateful that nothing bad happened. So I'm not sure if those were bad things or not. <laughs> Thank you. But Shane. I'm still here. And that's a that's a good thing. We're happy about that. Uh, yeah, did I get everyone on this? Okay, great. Well, we'll have some, oh, Jan, go ahead. And then we'll go to prayer. Yeah, the whole conversation about, was it Peter? And Jesus asking Peter, you know, do you love me or whatever? And the identity thing, it's so big because I still at 60, going to be 69 feel like I don't have a clue except I just do what's in front of my face and trust that spirit's going to lead me to where I'm supposed to go and um a public service announcement for all of you men out there get your PSA checked doctors don't do it but just tell your doctor to do it and also if you got any kind of digestive issues or tummy aches ever consider doing a gallbladder cleanse so you do not have to go through what phil went through that's my two cents i love you all and i want you to stay healthy and safe and it's been a grueling week and i could be speaking out of exhaustion but my um identity and relationship to christ and god is still just a big mystery to me Thank you, Jan. And yeah, yeah let's um, be grateful. Phil's out of the hospital and friends, let us pray. We've, we've, uh, we're gonna push along a little bit here for the sake of uh, the afternoon, but um, let's just take a deep breath. Look out at our sacred space. Know that you are blessed. Know that God is with you. Let us pray. Oh God, thank you for this gathering. Thank you for this community. As we seek to put our identity in being followers of your son, Jesus. Oh God, what is it that we can do to help the sick, help the hungry, help the lonely, help those suffering? 
take from us what you may. God, be with Phil, be with Rich, be with Maddie, be with the residents and employees where Randy is and all those healthcare workers in the world. Be with Karen and her changes. Be with, be with Christina and Andy. Be with those at Cathedral in the night. Be with all who are lost souls. Be with all who are seeking identity. Be with Shana and be with all the infants and all the children of the world. Oh God, we give thanks for all of that. And now hear us as we pray the Lord's Prayer. We invite everyone to unmute and we're gonna make it as messy as we possibly can. In your name, oh Lord. <laughs> Friends, our Father, Father, on earth that is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Give us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. And yeah. ever. Always fun. <laughs> Thank you all. Peace be with you. And friends, we have communion. And communion is a reminder that we too, like Jesus, are we like to come together and break bread with our family and our friends. And Jesus knew this, and he knew that it brought people together. He knew that it made getting to God easier. He knew that it made sense, that it was outside of the traditional ways, outside of the ways that he'd been taught growing up. But it was something that's transformed the entire world because through this communion, each and every one of us can have a personal relationship with God and with Jesus, our Savior. And so today I invite you to take the elements, Break the bread and have the body and blood of Jesus. You want some? Let us pray. Oh God, thank you for that special meal. Thank you for Jesus in our lives. Thank you for this group who reminds us as Rob said, we're all in different places. We're not all there, we're not all here. We're all in different places, but you are with us wherever we are and we give thanks for that. And we know, we give thanks for the symbol of this meal that reminds us of who we are in your world and that helps us to gain in relationship with you. And God, remind us that we are the offering, that we come to faith ways at our presence on this today, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're online, but you're not in video or whether you're in video and you're here. We, we uh, are reminded that that is our first offering, our first gift to one another. And we also have so much to give God that help us to give boldly and to give confidently, knowing that we will never be without. Um, and help us also to find people in need so that we can use our resources to help others and to extend the reach of faith ways and to extend your gospel into the world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you very much, friends. That was both of our, our quick uh, communion and our quick uh, <laughs> offering. Um, we may have to move that up closer to the front sometimes so we get that done a little bit with more time. But uh we are getting close and we have time for we'll have two songs if we can we'll have a song now and then rob will have our benediction and then we'll have one last song andrew look giving us the thumbs up thank you two three
Amen. And uh, Rob, you have our benediction. Indeed. Indeed. You'll hear me say this one uh, a few times. It's a classic, and I love it. And um, it's essentially uh, God's instruction to Moses. And it's probably the possibly the oldest benediction from Numbers 6, verse 24. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Well, peace to all. And we have, uh, I think, do we have one more song? I think, uh, Joseph, you got one in you? Oh, Dio. Go ahead, Dio. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, invite anyone to uh, unmute. Uh, Randy. Oh, Randy. Wait. Sorry, Randy. <laughs> Randy, serenity prayer before you leave? Uh, I'll do it. <clears throat> if uh, I can remember. Actually, Lance, why don't you do it? I think, uh, I think Randy will do it. Randy, you can you unmute? Oh, maybe not. All right, go ahead, Rob. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And not by my will, but by your will be done. Amen. Amen. Was that okay, Randy? I hope I did. Good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, deal. You're up. All right. The last song is... um. That Billy Joel piece, I love you just the way you are, is a different um, mix to it, but you've heard it before. <laughs> 